Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Governor Kristi Noem hasn't given up on a plan to reduce the tax on groceries in South Dakota. She says no one should take for granted that she'll sign a budget that doesn't contain a food re uh, tax reduction. Lawmakers are considering multiple bills that would reduce South Dakota's sales tax from 4.5% to 4.2%, but Noem says they still have time to change course. If they choose a different tax cut this year, they better make sure that they can afford to do the repeal on the sales tax on groceries in a couple of years, too, because they're going to have to do both. Anom says South Dakota is just one of seven states that tax the food that you purchase at the store. Meanwhile, a bill that would ban using state funding to hold drag shows in South Dakota is officially dead in the state legislature. House Bill 1116 was previously smoked out, which is a legislative rule that allows a legislator to bring a bill back to the full body if it dies in committee. After a smokeout, legislators have to decide whether or not to debate it. A smokeout does not guarantee a dead bill gets resurrected and considered. And South Dakota Democratic lawmakers and the Oglala Sioux Tribe are voicing their frustrations that a bill to create an Indian Child Welfare Task Force failed in the House. The measure would have helped more Native Americans become foster and adoptive families. It would have also prioritized the placement of Native children with their relatives or tribal members. Democratic Representative Oren Lesmeister says he's appalled at how many people voted against the bill. We hear all the time that and I'm paraphrasing, but they can do better. We need to, you know, we need to help them to do better. Um, this is an opportunity to do that. Absolutely, the hugest opportunity they've had in a long time to do it. And they didn't do it. To read more about the bill's defeat, as well as more reaction from tribal members and lawmakers, check out this Kelloland.com original by Jasmine Jackson. As friends and family gather to pay their respects to former South Dakota Representative Jack Billion today, the flags will fly at half staff at the state capitol. Billion worked as a surgeon in Sioux Falls and served in the state legislature from 1993 until 96. In 2006, he was a Democratic nominee for governor, but lost the November election to former Governor Mike Rounds. Billion was 83 years old. Now let's get a check of our forecast with meteorologist Scott Mudd. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Perry. Good morning, everybody. Uh, temperatures today close to average. Many locations will probably come in just slightly below. We'll have some sunshine after we get rid of this fog in eastern Kettleland. A high of 35 in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 42 in Pierre. 41 in Rapid City. We've been watching snow in western and southwestern South Dakota this morning. I think over the next couple of hours it will go away, but it will come back by late this afternoon and into this evening. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. Former NBA player and South Dakota native Mike Miller has another Let It Fly sports bar and restaurant in the works. He already owns two, one in Sioux Falls and the other in Tennessee, but the latest one is going up in Omaha and the CEO says it won't be the last one. I'm from New York. Don't let that be a bad thing. I didn't come 1,200 miles to open up one restaurant. Now Lopez says they're having conversations of opening a second location in South Dakota and a second one in Omaha and another one in Mississippi. Well, bird watchers will want to grab their binoculars and head to the shores along the Big Sioux River in northwest Iowa. Several bald eagles have been flocking to a location by the Klondike Dam southwest of Larchwood this week. We found one family who heard about the eagles on social media and wanted to see them for themselves. There was one sitting on a rock down there. I think it was eating a fish. And the other ones are just sitting up in the tree. Locals say while it's not uncommon to see eagles in the area, it is unusual for so many of them to congregate in one spot. UND players made a stop at Terry Redland Elementary Thursday morning ahead of the Summit League Championships. The team sat with fourth graders in math class. And while playing math games, students asked questions about college and basketball to the players. Michael Sucker says students were curious about what college is like. Making sure they're excited and enjoying school. So I think if you have a love or passion for something, uh, you know, you just want to continue. And I think an intrinsic drive is probably more important than... A UND plays against Denver tonight at 6 o'clock. Here's a look at the work crews put in to get the Denny Sanford Premier Center ready for the Summit League Championships. This year's tournament looks a little different than in years past. 
An extra day of games has been added, so the tournament tipping off at 1230 this afternoon. You can stay with Kelloland News on air and online for complete championship coverage. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, our weather today and tonight. We've got a winter weather advisory for a small section of the Black Hills, including the Custer area. So we'll continue to watch those trends. I think many areas today will see more melting snow than adding it. As we look at future casts, Sioux Falls likely bounces at least back to the low to mid 30s by the uh, late afternoon hours. Pretty close to 40, uh, give or take a couple degrees in central Kettleland. Even Rapids should be close to 40 or a little bit above that. Numbers tonight, not too bad. I would expect a lot of 20s, and I do expect we're going to rebound tomorrow at least into the mid-30s in Sioux Falls and 40s northwest Iowa where we have very little snow on the ground uh, towards Spencer, Iowa and points south. I think Sunday is really going to amplify these differences in weather. We've got a fairly stout band of snow mixed with a little rain on the southern flank of this coming in on Sunday. You're going to notice the wind increasing from the southeast. So locations that start picking up snow Sunday morning are going to have blowing snow north of Highway 14 is where a lot of that's going to be. And uh, we'll pick on Watertown, Millbank, Aberdeen, Webster, some of these same towns that just had more of the winter weather the other day. Sioux Falls could get uh, a sloppy coating of an inch or so. Maybe there's some debate about that. But I think the afternoon temperature could be warm enough to take care of it and melt that. So that's another thing to think about. And yes, there are even 50s showing up in the South Central on Sunday afternoon. So eh, Sunday's got a lot of moving parts to it as far as the variability in weather from place to place across Kettle Lamb. Um, a snapshot of where we're at on our snow, initial snow forecast. We're putting out some numbers that are at least four inches through Mobridge and Aberdeen. You'll recall the last storm system produced a good swath of five to nine. I don't see this being a whole lot different than that. It's some of those same locations, so we've got some precedents for that. Sioux Falls, last time around, we didn't pick up much. We'll see if we can get some, at least some rain mixed with snow. We're not done. The pattern is going to feature a strong jet stream coming out of the Intermountain West. And when you're into, you know, early to mid-March, you just have to take it one day at a time. And this river of air is probably going to send out pieces towards us. And that's why the seven day gets a little more cluttered in Pier and Rapid City, because each one of these days can offer up some chances of snow. The whole thing will pull out at some point late next week. Jury's still out on an exact storm track. That's still debatable on how that'll look. So bottom line, take in the nice days, right? When we've got the mid thirties today, Sioux Falls, I think uh, mid 40s and fill up and then you look at the seven day. We're going to peak on this forecast this weekend. Once we get to Monday, Tuesday, it's downhill temperature wise and more snow on the way. Probably a lot less melting too. So that's uh, something there to watch. We think Aberdeen could be as low as 20 or near that level by Tuesday and Wednesday. And of course, there's probably more room to cut the temperature after day seven, given the opportunities of snow. And there's quite a few 20 and 30% chances of snow for Pier and Rapid City. Really, it kicks off on Sunday with that first wave. Probably more snow north of Pier on that one. But any of those days could at least pick up some chances, even toward the Black Hills. So days three through seven, Keep watching the weather. We'll have, of course, a lot more to talk about with this forecast online at Kelloland.com.